All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Impact Marketer. Today's guest is a digital marketer, founder and host of the Nomad Wolf podcast. Having generated over 30K in profit through Facebook lead gen in one month, reaching the top 200 business podcasts in the US, England, Ireland, Philippines, Israel, and the 13th most popular podcast in Thailand in its first week. Being a music photographer that has worked with the likes of G-Eazy, Porter Robinson, and Cascade, capturing world-renowned festivals such as Electric Zoo, CrossFest, and Drop Zone, he's experienced life vibrantly through his travels. So much so that shortly after he graduated college, he took the leap of faith to move abroad to Asia to pursue digital marketing. He serves as a beacon of inspiration to those around him looking to push their boundaries and trust in their ability to make the unexpected work. Going from a lost college kid to a highly skilled marketer, podcast host, and two-time marathon runner within two weeks of each other, please help me in welcoming Glenn Gabriel. Hey guys, dude, Ronnie, thank you for the introduction. That um, you, you make my life sound cooler than it is. <laughs> <laughs> and he's humble. <laughs> so happy to have you on, Glenn. Awesome to be here. So, yeah, so on today's episode of Talk of the Day with Ronnie Hay, we have Glenn Gabriel, and we're going to jump straight into some mindset questions. Love it. Hit me with it. All right, man. So, first question, how are you so sure that moving to Asia was the right move? Um, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't 100% sure, to be honest. Uh, but it did stem from, uh, I guess, every idea has its in, uh, little inception or jump off point. Uh, I would say like eight or seven years uh, prior to moving out to Asia, me and my buddy, we were studying abroad in Barcelona and we came across an internet post about people that were making money online uh, through digital marketing. And this was like back in 2009. Um, and at the time we were also biology majors uh, we were both biochemistry majors at UCSD. So the idea of making a career online and being able to travel, uh, we were reading this while we were studying abroad and the, the idea kind of just stuck. Um, and it was something that, you know, we never really let go of. Uh, so when the, so when the opportunity actually presented itself, um, because of my buddy, uh, who took the first leap uh, to move to Chiang Mai and then eventually Bangkok, he invited me out and I, I just knew that it was just one of those things that it, if I passed on it, I would probably regret it. And that was the one thing that I was pretty sure of. That's so interesting, man, because I was also very inspired by my study abroad trip in college, mm. um, but in a reverse way. So I went, I studied in Rome for three months and I saw that the standard of living was much lower in Europe, except they were way happier and, and like thriving, in, in, at least in my perspective. So when I came back, I was like, shit, like I have no excuse to not be like killing it right now. And that's when I started my first e-com business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always that, um, you know, shift in perspective whenever you put yourself out of your bubble, whether that's environment or, you know, what, what you grew up in. Um, that kind of just opens the doors to, you know, you being able to achieve something that was like, I don't know, further than, or not, not expected because of your current situation. Right. So that, uh, that study abroad trip definitely served as a really big catalyst for, I assume both of us. And, and let me ask you, so <clears throat> I know the, I call it the laptop lifestyle, um, compels a lot of people to jump into this kind of entrepreneurship. Do you think you were trying to escape something internally? I don't think I was trying to escape something. Um, I think I was trying to fulfill something and maybe, maybe that's kind of like two sides of the same coin. Um, but I guess in terms of the, I, to, to answer your question, escaping something I've, well, I've grown up in San Diego. That, that's where I'm from, like most of my life. And I'm not trying to say that I was trying to escape home by any means, but I was definitely trying to fulfill some part of me that was saying that you should, you know, get out of your hometown or your home city and experience something and kind of make something of yourself. 
Um, so I wouldn't say escaping something, but definitely trying to fulfill um, an idea or, or a dream or something that I felt might be lost if I stayed where I was. Mm. I think, I think we, we meant the same thing, just using different words, uh, like escaping mediocrity, I, I guess is what you were trying to do. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly two sides of the same coin. So mm -hmm. definitely trying to escape mediocrity and, you know, see what, uh, see what answers could be uh, uncovered uh, in my time abroad. So, yeah. And when you went abroad, right, because you, you basically picked up your bags and moved from San Diego to Thailand, right? Yeah, pretty much. Did you have a support system? I, know, I did. Like, okay, go ahead. I did. I was um, incredibly lucky because my, my same buddy um, that uh, took the leap, I guess, a year or two prior to uh, me coming out, um, he pretty much laid the foundation. You know, he was uh, my, my buddy, Rob. Um, shout out, Rob. Um, <laughs> he, uh, we, we we're in the same frat, so we uh, grew through the whole college experience, the whole abroad experience, and even... Uh, our early days is uh, trying to build uh, whatever something online. Um, so when he finally got his break and he moved out to, to Thailand, he, you know, started to network with a bunch of other laptop lifestylers um, and then pretty much built a sort of ecosystem that when I came out there, I was kind of like inserted in and had a support system and had, pretty much, you know, a co-working space to like jump into. Um, and it was like really easy. And I, I would say that I'm certainly super blessed because not a lot of laptop lifestylers that take that leap into digital nomadry um, have that sort of luxury. So I'm definitely grateful for, uh, for friends like him and the, the people that I've uh, grew up with here in, in Thailand. Having, that, that's amazing, first off. And, and having that, like, was it an easy journey for you? Because you had um, I guess acclimating to uh, the life in Thailand here uh, was pretty easy for me to kind of still hold my own um, and kind of prove my own worth to myself. Um, you know, I... I, I set certain goals to like achieve that way I wouldn't, you know, pack my bags and eventually make my way home. Right. Um, so that was like probably the hardest personal summit to, to reach was to make sure that my actual digital marketing chops were like uh, straight on, straight uh, on point. And I don't know, just kind of left me here because, you know, when it comes to people that are digital nomads, um, there's a lot of us here that are like, when, when we come in contact with each other, it's just like, oh, you're part of this dream that we're kind of living. And it's kind of sad to see some people go because they couldn't like keep the dream alive or something. So the support system is quite strong, um, but it's still up to you how much you want to continue this dream or, you know, you, you just don't want to come back kind of like with, uh, with your hands in your pockets sort of thing. Did you ever come close to that? Um, I would say like my first five months of just like trying to, uh, run these Facebook campaigns, um, you know, using, using my buddy's framework was probably the, the toughest, but, he, he always has been like so uh, strong with his mentorship saying like, you know, just trust the process and just keep on launching. And, you know, sooner, to lit, sooner than later, I, I was able to kind of catch a groove and uh, stay creative and, and make things work. Can you walk me through how you got through those five months? Um, how I got through those five like, well, months. Well, first off, what happened? Like, what were you feeling? And yeah, how did you get through that? Oh, man. Um, well, it's kind of tough because like, you know, I, I'm inserted into this ecosystem where I feel like everybody around me is just, you know, crushing it, right? 
they kind of found their groove, they kind of found their processes. Um, and I was, you know, obviously the newest guy. Uh, so I, I definitely spent a lot of time just trying to pick everybody's minds, you know, how they were able to create, uh, you know, different angles and different types of, uh, messaging and copy within their, their pre-sell pages. Uh, you know, what types of images that they used, um, especially, I guess back then we would use, uh, images with like, uh, you know, uh, a lower third, like headline within the, within the image. Um, how, like how to, uh, make that more, uh, captivating to, I guess, a newsfeed audience. Um, so it was just like a bunch of trial and error. Um, and I, I guess at that time, um, I don't know, I, I, I definitely dabbled in, not to sound like cliche digital nomad Bali or Thailand-esque, kind of like what we were talking about <laughs> earlier, but there's, a, there's an essential part of grounding and uh, meditation that I do believe in. Um, and, you know, it, it, it centered around just being able to take uh, things day by day, moment to moment, and understanding that, you know, everything's a process and it what you know what when, when you're new to something and things are challenging the, it, it's going to be you know your mind's going to be like this is painful this is uncomfortable um but if you're able to methodically uh remember that everything is a process and you just need to tackle things one by one then you'll be able to you know summit whatever challenge or whatever sort of discomfort um, and kind of hopefully accelerate your learning. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely helped in those, uh, first couple months was just being able to, uh, pick the minds of people that were around me that, uh, knew what they were doing. Um, and then also kind of just stay grounded in the sense that, yeah, this is new and, um, I just need to, you know, kind of trust the process and take things day by day. When you were picking their brains, did, did there come a point when you were being very hard on yourself because you had all this expert advice, but you weren't getting the results? I feel like there's, there's always those points where, you know, you are your own worst critic, right? And to be honest, that never really goes away. Like you might, you know, summit like that first part of discomfort, Right. But there's always new skills and new chops to learn. Right. For example, like, you know, when I started up my podcast and, um, you know, I'm, I'm still pretty much a nobody, uh, even though I think the Nomad Wolf podcast is one of the best podcasts besides Impact Marketer. Uh, we're, we're right up there. Um, you know, there, there's still always a, a bunch of uh, learning curves and, you know, self-doubt that, uh you, you come across. Um, if you're able to kind of transmute um, all of your previous experiences, all of your, all of your previous uh, bouts of discomfort uh, into, uh, and your learnings from that into your new one, then you might be able to have a, a better feel for, um, and, and more confidence with, with uh, your, your newer sort of projects. But like I said before, you know, when it came to the Nomad Wolf podcast and, you know, creating frameworks and, and trying to reach out to guests and also trying to, um, you know, just put yourself out there more, that was uncomfortable. Um, and the same thing that I'm experiencing with uh, trying to build my new agency right now. I mean, I am, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And it's, it's, it's tough. And, you know, I, I, I look back on, you know, when I started this whole digital nomad type of thing, it's more about like, be, you know, asking people who uh, are in the position that you want to be in uh, for some help, uh, for some mem mentorship, and maybe for some frameworks and, and taking the, that advice and trying it, uh, trying it on and trying to take it day by day. So it, that, that whole discomfort type of thing will, will never leave. Um, like 
yeah, there's always more summits beyond the one, the one hill that you, you conquer. Right. So, and that, that's just the process of learning and, and that's just life. Beautifully said brother. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Glenn. And that'll conclude. I think it's a very strong note and our talk of the day with thanks so much, man. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.